Hey, what's up guys? Devin here with Backcountry Exposure. Today we're going to talk about ultralight backpacking. And this is a topic that can be pretty difficult to talk about because everybody has an opinion about this is how you save weight backpacking. This is how you become an ultralight backpacker. Technically, being an ultralight backpacker means you have a base weight of 10 pounds or less. Base weights of 10 pounds or less are not always feasible for everybody that is out there backpacking. Whether that is by choice or because you don't have a choice, certain regulations in the area don't allow you to accomplish that base weight, like having to carry a bear canister, or you just don't have the money or the budget to make it happen. There are like four basic questions or things to consider when you are trying to become an ultralight backpacker. Deciding on whether or not you really want to do it, meaning do you really want to be an ultralight backpacker or a lightweight backpacker, that you are willing to focus first on the big four. The big four being your pack, your sleeping bag, your shelter system, and your sleeping pad. The third item, deciding what the right base weight is for you, depending on where you live, etc., etc. And then fourth, focusing on what are the essentials of your system and what are you willing to leave behind. The fourth item on that really being the mindset of what allows people to accomplish the base weight that they are setting out to uh, set as a goal. So let's go ahead and talk about a little story about my personal experience with going from a traditional backpacker of carrying whatever weight ended up in my pack to really focusing on a system that I wanted to have to accomplish being an ultralight backpacker. Now this entire timeline of me being an ultralight or focusing on ultralight backpacking really only started about eight, nine months ago. I went on a trip to southern Utah and I carried a pack that had a total weight of 38 pounds. I was out in April, it was a little cold, but I carried way too much stuff with me. I had more gear than I needed and it just became a burden because I didn't need to carry that much weight on my back. So since then I've put a lot of focus into what are the essentials, what do I really need to take with me, and what can I leave behind. So once I made the decision of I wanted to become an ultralight backpacker because I simply just didn't want to carry that much weight on my back anymore, it was easy for me to start thinking of ways to save weight. Now your reason for becoming an ultralight backpacker or focusing on it could be a lot different. I know one specific person that started focusing on lightweight and saving weight because he has back problems. So your decision of why you want to save weight needs to be specific to you. So that leads me into the big four, which is, like I said, your pack, your tent, your sleeping bag, and your sleeping pad. So this is what everybody really focuses on when they first start trying to save weight in their backpacking system. The reason it's so important is you can save a lot of weight really fast on just those four items. On the table here, I have two packs. I have the Exos 38 from Osprey and I have the Atmos 65 from Osprey as well. These packs are very different and they also weigh very different weights as well. The 65 liter is going to weigh a lot more simply because it's a bigger pack. So if I'm going ultra light, I'm gonna focus on a pack that is much smaller and a lot lighter weight. So it's way more simplistic, has less zippers, less pockets, and you could get very, very like entrenched in different types of gear that are out there with packs. Specifically, there are brands like Z-Packs and Gossamer Gear that have packs that literally weigh ounces and not pounds. This pack, the Exos 38, weighs just under two pounds, which I think is fantastic for a lightweight backpack. But if you want to go with a 12 ounce, 35 liter backpack, Gossamer Gear has a pack for you. The second item being your shelter system or your tent. Now, 
When I started backpacking, I've always carried a tent like this. This is the Marmot Early Light two-person. This thing weighs almost six pounds with a footprint. And prior to this year, I didn't really care that my tent weighed that much. I just knew that it was a good tent and I put it on my pack and I carried it in. It wasn't a big deal. But once I decided that, no, six pounds is a lot of weight for a backpack, I decided that I needed to have something different. So I went with the Sierra Designs flashlight one and saved myself nearly three pounds of weight by going with a one person tent and a non freestanding tent. So there's a lot of options out there. Don't let anybody tell you that in order for you to achieve an ultralight setup, you have to use a tarp tent that is only 12 ounces and it's the only way to go to be an ultralight backpacker. This works just fine. It's three pounds, not a big deal. I can still achieve the base weight that I want without going super crazy on different types of gear. Other options that you've got available are to go with like a hammock. Now a hammock can be expensive and can cost a lot of money simply in the fact that there's a lot of different elements that go with this. You need the hammock, you need the tarp, you need an under quilt, you need a top quilt. Sometimes you need a pad. There's just so many things about a hammock system that I personally don't love, but it's a good way to go and it saves a lot of space and a lot of weight in your pack. So the third item of the big three being your sleeping bag. So I've got an example here. This is the Perea Outdoor Products Thermo Down. This is a 15 degree down sleeping bag. Down being the key word there. Synthetic bags take up a lot of space even though they're not as ex expensive as down sleeping bags. However, this thing is less than $100. Fantastic price. But down is the way to go because it is lightweight and it saves a lot of space in your pack. So down has a lot of really good qualities about it that allow achieving an ultralight setup really easy. You could spend a lot of money on a sleeping bag, but you don't have to. The fourth item being your sleeping pad. Here I've got the Thermarest Neo Air. This thing weighs 12 ounces. It's also expensive. Getting yourself an air chamber pad versus a closed cell foam or a self inflating pad that has foam in it will save you a lot of space and weight. However, closed cell foam pads that roll up or the uh, Z Light pad from Thermarest. Those are really lightweight, but they don't have these space savings. So again, things to consider in your system uh, to be able to save weight, but you don't want something that weighs like three pounds for a sleeping pad. That's just crazy. Which leads me into the third item of the topics that I really want to talk about. Decide what base weight makes sense for you. Technically, being an ultralight backpacker requires you to be at a base weight of 10 pounds or less. But when it really comes down to it, does it really matter if you are technically an ultralight backpacker? No, it doesn't. So leave all of the technicalities aside and just decide that where I live, I can have a base weight of 12 pounds because I have to carry a bear canister or I have to carry this or I have to carry this because of certain regulations. Basically, just decide on what base weight makes the most sense for you. Things are going to change too depending on the season. If it's a summer ultralight system versus a winter ultralight system, your base weight is going to be drastically different because you need to be able to be safe in the backcountry. And that's one of the important things to consider as well. So the fourth item that I want to talk about is what are the essentials and what can you leave behind? This is also really important because for me, this is the like defining or culminating aspect of becoming an ultralight backpacker because you're starting to think about your specific system and how can you save weight. Going with this 38 liter backpack was a really great way for me to say, okay, I only have 38 liters of space. I cannot carry any more gear than what I can get into this pack. So if I feel like, well, I could use that, but I don't really think I'm going to, then I'm going to leave it behind. Um, for example, a chair. 
I don't absolutely need a chair to sit on to be comfortable in the backcountry. So think about what are the essential items that I absolutely need that I cannot live without going into the backcountry. Either it is a matter of I have to have it for safety, I have to have it to be comfortable, I have to have it in order to accomplish what I am going to be doing. So the last two things that I want to talk about are killing the myth that in order to be an ultralight backpacker, you have to spend a lot of money. And going ultralight versus stupid light. In order to go ultralight, you have to spend a lot of money. It's not true. Yes, ultralight items are expensive or they can be expensive. For example, this 15 degree sleeping bag is $79 and it is one of the best sleeping bags I have ever owned. I also have like a $400 sleeping bag from Mont Bell that is obviously much lighter weight than this because it's a 30 degree bag. The comfort of it isn't any better than this $80 bag. Another example being this Tokes Titanium pot. I could go with a Snow Peak pot and spend an extra $20 on that and accomplish the exact same thing. So don't get so caught up in, in order for me to go ultralight, I have to have a Cuban fiber tent. No, you can go with this Sierra Designs tent or anything like it that isn't Cuban fiber and accomplish the base weight that you want. You don't have to spend a lot of money. But let's also talk about going ultralight versus stupid light. The reason that I want to talk about this is if you're thinking about ways to save weight, never allow yourself to go so ultralight that you compromise your safety in the backcountry. Just don't let yourself get in the mindset of, I don't need that, that'll save me an extra six ounces, and then you screw yourself. So guys, ultralight backpacking is a really cool concept, and it's one of my favorite things to focus on right now with my backpacking system. I'm always looking for different gear or things that I can incorporate into my system that will either save me weight or they serve a dual purpose, etc. that allows me to be able to still have a great time in the backcountry and not carry so much weight on my back. I really appreciate you guys watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't and hope you have an awesome day.